From atop the mountains of central British Columbia to you listening around the world, this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including all of our terrestrial affiliates around North America and on the digital side on TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, we have them free for you at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR, Newswire, and much more. Tonight's show is brought to you by Chive Charities. Help make the world 10% happier by visiting Chive Charities today. You can find them on our website. While on the banks of the Cape Fear River, Chris Bledsoe and his son, Christopher Jr., and three of his subcontractors discovered they were about to experience the most harrowing day of their lives, involving unexplained phenomena. This led them to believe this was the end of the world, but Bledsoe's infamous 2007 Cape Fear incident and abduction and new information has transformed his life, and some of it not for the good. And we're going to get into this very much. I kept the intro short because I want to spend as much time as possible with Chris. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. Chris Bledsoe, it was a pleasure meeting you in San Francisco for UFOCon 2020. And to be able to shake your hand and get to know you and your experiences was an absolute delight for me and many people there in attendance. How are you? I'm doing uh, great. And I really appreciate that, um, my friend. That that makes me feel well. Well, good, good, because I know I know you're someone you're struggling with your health right now, and the, you know you're trying to get back on board with everything, and uh, you got a lot of good people in your corner trying to make sure that that you're doing good and everybody else is doing good. So you know, since I saw you in San Francisco. You know, I've been doing a lot of research on you. I've been talking with Bob McGuire and Steve McDaniel about you, two scientists who work very closely with you. You know, when you look at the people who have surrounded you regarding your encounters and your events, you know, these aren't just your regular paranormal investigators or UFO investigators. These are real scientists who are looking into this phenomena and engaging with you. How comforting has that been for you to be able to rely on people of knowledge and of education to try and help explain what has been going on? Well, actually, um, if, if I could elaborate on that a little bit, uh, when it first, when it, when it all first started, uh, back in 2007, you know, I had no clue, uh, about anything UFO really at all, or, or, um, anything accompanied with it. So what I'm saying is, is after the experience, um, we found out that uh, there was nobody there that could help answer questions. It could tell us anything. And so um, all I could hear from the UFO world is the government's going to send the men in black they're going to kill you that you can't talk i mean i was scared to death to speak about this to anybody afraid that the government was going to come get me and um i learned within the first year um that wasn't so and um it actually turned out to be the best thing for for me and for my family is to have these scientists come because they bring big validation when they come and they're interested and they believe it. And um, so it's been a big honor to work with uh, some very important people. Chris, with the experiences that you were having, you know, that started back in 2007, they were so life-altering for you regarding your UFO sighting, your abduction, your missing time, and everything like that. You know, do you ever sit back and wonder 
why you? What changed in your life that made this experience happen, and why did it have to happen? Yeah, well, I think about that all the time, and um, I've never, I can never uh, come up with any sort of answer. Um, I ask other people that, and and all I get is why not? You know, why not you? Somebody's got to tell the truth about this stuff, and. You know, I'm the kind of guy that um, I, I've already hit the bottom, lost all my friends um, early on, and family members from ridicule and to church and everything else. And so now I don't care anymore. People can say what they want. They can criticize all they want, but they just are uninformed. They have no clue to um, the caliber of people that, are really interested in this stuff and are there. And if you don't blab a lot, you get to hang out with these kinds of people. And so, um, yeah, I don't, uh, it's a different, it's a whole different ball game for me. And do you like it? Do you like your life now because of what happened? Yeah, I do. It's totally different. I had no clue. I'm not sure my wife would say that so much, but it's been a, a learning experience for the whole family. And I would have never met the people that I have met um, over the years. And I mean, some very important folks and uh, very good friends like Dr. McGuire and his wife and uh, many others that so, yeah, I wouldn't go back for nothing. It's, it's been too far. There was, there was a long time there I would have. Chris, you're a humble man. You, you, you're you somebody who has always given back to the community. At one point, you were a deacon in your church. You were somebody who uh, tried to be a pillar of strength for the community around and a real, a real good guy that was well-known back then. And then when everything happened... And you were trying to find your own answers. What went through you when, and maybe your family as well, when everybody who knew you personally and had had corresponded with you for maybe weeks, maybe months, maybe years, decades, all of a sudden turned their back? How did you how did you go through that with with you know the strength that you have had? Well, it it was hard. It it was a lot to that uh, at that time. And one thing was, is in 2004, late 04, I had a near-death experience. And uh, that nearly took me out of here. And just two years later, I, I had this experience on the Cape Fear River. And so in that time frame, um, uh, you know, I wasn't working. I didn't have a job. I I was so sick. My dad talked me into going down to the beach to build that first house um, in late 2006. But everybody thought I was nuts. You know, they just thought he's nuts. He's got to be crazy. You know, he's seeing lights in the sky. And the more that, They said that the more it made me uh, angry and the more it made me want to be vindicated. And so it changed my life. It set me on a road of trying to prove everybody wrong, which I have done pretty much. um, Well, I have done it. Everybody that known me from the beginning. Chris, your case, your case is very special, and it, it is some, one that has caught the attention of everybody from the UFO community to government officials and agencies, the To the Stars Academy. What about your experiences and who you've become has drawn the attention of scientists from across the United States wanting to study you and what has happened? Well, um you know, that's part of it. Um, like, like you say, I have had the honors to, because they know it's real, because there's so many people that have been here 
and that have left here change that is actually seeing something up really close, um, uh, you know, life changing. It's, it's, it's until you in this in this business in the UFO business until you know until you see it you really don't know it. I don't know how anybody can go out and try to try to sell the world on books and on knowledge and information and have never seen this to start with. So how do you sell what you don't that you've never seen? Pretty um, pretty crazy, right? But. As a fellow experiencer, I can I can attest to what you're saying there, you know, because the hardest thing to do is to have people that you know, trust, and love tell you that they don't believe you. Well, that's what happened with my even my mother and dad. But you know, this friend of mine, uh, he died in uh, he died at Thanksgiving of this year. Doctor Hal Povetmeyer, and he was. Uh, he was a NASA scientist. He was an astronomer. He was an engineer, rocket scientist. He started there before NASA was NASA, uh, like in the 56 or 7 range. He worked with Warner Von Brown. He worked with Jalen Hynek. Uh, he was his student at Ohio State, by the way. But um, he came early on. He was the first probably big scientist that came. Uh, and that was in early 08, somewhere around June uh, or July. He he knocked on the door, and that started a, a conversation that became a friendship uh, with the kids, with my children. Um, we we adopted him and his family, and he and our family. And when he passed away at Thanksgiving, he was coming to my house to spend the weekend. So. It was he, it was a guy from NASA that went to my mother's house and knocked on the door and set my mother and dad down and said, you, you do not treat your son like you're treating him. You need to listen to him because what he's telling you is 100% real. So that's my experience with these three-letter agencies. Um, just good people that want to help, that want to learn just like you and I do, that are honest for the most part and, and, and what they're looking for. Chris and Bledsoe I, is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Chris, I, I'm very curious, and, and I'm going to be jumping around a lot over the next little bit here because, you know, we only got you for a finite amount of time, and we got to get a lot of information in on you on this. You have had... Th- Many people believe your story who who are very, very productive when it comes to investigating this type of phenomena. Very high up people who, for the most part, the majority of the UFO field may not even acknowledge or even know that they exist. Yet there is a, a complete crowd out there in the UFO world that has negatively portrayed you and your family how have you dealt with that? Because that cannot feel good. Well, for one, I really, you know, I used to let it bother me, but I don't pay any attention anymore because they're just uninformed. They only knew. They had no flipping uh, clue as to what, like you just said, there's, there's things going on. Uh, people that are involved in this stuff, investigating it, that we would have no clue exist. That just really incredible. And and while they're, uh, you know, making their statements and all, I'm 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 involved in some things that uh, I can't tell. That's the hard thing. You can't tell anybody. You can't run and say, oh, God, you know, just where are you coming from? Look here and look at this. You know, I could prove it. But you can't. You have to just let them talk and and just understand you're in a kind of a club that very few are in. That's the way I'd have to say it. It has you know, to be I talk difficult. A whole lot. Go ahead. Well, Sorry, it is sir. It's difficult. I was going to say, if you get, if you talk a lot, you get thrown out of the club. So you have to be quiet, which I've done pretty good over the last eight or ten years, keeping it quiet. 
why have to keep it quiet, though? There's a lot of people who may not understand that because you're probably next to Travis Walton, the best case that has ever come forward in the last 40 years, and there haven't been a lot of them. When you came out, did you expect that many detractors to try and, you know, poo-poo your entire story? I had no idea. Yeah, right. I never had a clue. Um, You know, I'm just an honest guy. I had this experience with lights that came out of the sky. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very sick. I came through a near death experience and really didn't want to live. I was at that point in my life and I cried out for help and never knew it would come in the way it did. And, um, You know, so I keep that in the back of my thoughts the whole time. These things came and they they, they healed me. They have uh, helped other people that have been here. And a lot of people have seen it. So, you know, there's a there's a group that that I, I hang with. And all the negative ones, I just let them do their thing and I don't pay any attention. I don't read the reports. I don't read, uh, it's like Twitter. I just, I just, uh, deleted that. It's just such a nasty place. Can't be there. It's just uninformed people. This community has always fretted with saying, where are the experiencers? Where are the people who have these these stories with this evidence? And when you come along and you're like, look, I have photographic evidence, I have video evidence, I've had top scientists show up at my door and I've proved to them what is going on, and yet this entire community continues to, to beat you up, your family up. I mean, you, a man can only take so much, Chris, you know, and I'm not trying to fire you up or anything along those lines, but with the emotion of it all, how do, how have you been able to stay level headed? How has your family been able to to just say, you know what, it is what it is. This is what we have to deal with on a daily basis, and let's just cut the roots of it. I mean, because not a lot of people can do that, or would fire back on the other side, saying, oh, well, maybe Chris is not what he says he is if he can't. Uh, handle what's happening or the questions that are coming on social media. Right. Well, like I said, I don't pay a lot of attention to social media and any of the negative stuff. And I, um, I can't get away from this thing. The family and I have all uh, thought maybe we could forget about it and it go away and, and just be normal people. Like, uh, we all, were once and it just, you just can't get away from it it doesn't want me to forget about it when i try it shows up i mean i walk outside and there it is it, it comes and it comes really close at times and you've seen some of the stuff i've taken pictures and videos of this so um, so what do you do when it won't leave you alone so it's almost like they are saying, no, 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 we're not allowing you to get rid of this. You have to be some sort of messenger. Exactly. That's exactly the way it is. Uh, if I try to run from it, it just comes harder. And people that know that have been here have seen it up close, really close and personal. Feet away, 10 feet away, not uh, you know miles up in the sky. Or some little dot that flies by. We're talking about things that come real close. Orbs, um, you know, orbs in the sky, which are craft. Um, just, uh, it's just so involved. There's no, it's not a guess with me. It's not, did that really happen or are they really real? It's not like that. It's, I know they're there. I know they're there. And, and they want me to know that. And so it's just this constant interaction um, throughout all these years of of showing up and saying, hey, you're, uh, you know, we, we want you to tell this. So they, I've let them direct you. my life go, the whole time. 
if you had, as we only got about two and a half minutes here before we have to go to break at the bottom of the hour, Chris, if you had a message that you would like to send to all the detractors out there, people, whether it's the people at MUFON who you felt really threw you under the bus, and we'll get into that in the next half hour, or whether it's the UFO community that is really, you know, trying to degrade who you are and what your experience is, what message would you have for them? Well, um, with all those people, we sat down for about five minutes with me and let let me share um, evidence of where I've been and the people that uh, I have been involved with. they would never question that again, I guarantee you, because I can prove that part right. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not about proving to me anymore. Um, it's about a mission and um, a message for the world. The world has to learn that this stuff is real. If we're going to ever, we're going to ever succeed as a, a human race. It's, it's just so, so important. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And I, and I think that's pretty solid because you have hundreds of photos, hundreds of videos. I mean, I remember you were showing me your phone. I think it was about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning in San Francisco there. And you were showing me your okay. phone with all of the, the photos. And, and you're into the thousands of pieces of evidence. And, you know, for anybody to kind of question what you've got, I mean, the most of the time when you have these experiences, you have other people with you witnessing this at the same time. It's not just Chris who is going out there and saying, oh, well, there's a there's a UFO, and by the way, I'm just going to chat about it. No, no, I've got videos uh, that I didn't take that was taken with people standing beside me coming to visit, and you can hear them talking in the video, and, uh, you know, visible orbs that appear and fly up to us, and you can hear the people saying oh my god there it is or i I finally got one and so um, there's a lot of people that interact with this stuff Uh, a lot of scientists like dr mcguire he's a serious very serious scientist and uh, he had an experience here dr john alexander uh came here and had a very big experience and there are many many more Many scientists from from um, universities and uh, like Wake Forest University, Duke University. I have a uh, you know North Carolina University at Wilmington. There's a lot of people, a lot of scientists that have been here and have witnessed this stuff and will stand up for it and have had their lives changed forever. Chris, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we're going to go to break at the bottom of the hour here. Chris Bledsoe, The Ultimate Experience on Spaced Out Radio, coming up next. Hey, space travelers. This is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. If you like it hot, real hot then heat up your meals with bumblefoot hot sauce get your bumblefoot hot sauce today the sauce bumblelicious and the four million scoville unit bumble we're going in hot real hot coming out even hotter keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight bumblefoot hot sauce available now at kajans.com Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, Space Travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. So for more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. Need that weekend's supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. 
I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Great to have each and every one of you with us. We want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. And don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at hashtag spacedoutradio, the show at spacedoutradio, or my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. Make sure you give us a follow. Thank you so much. Chris Bledsoe is here tonight on Spaced Out Radio. He doesn't do a lot of interviews, but when he does... He's got one of the most amazing stories when it comes to ET contact, alien abduction, orbs, UFOs, interaction with extraterrestrials. It is phenomenal and a story you need to pay attention to. Chris, welcome back. Thank you, Dave. I'm glad to be here. Previous to 2007, when you had your experience at the Cape Fear River, what did you know about UFOs? Um, much to nothing really, because, you know, at that time I was raising, still raising children. They're, they're all grown now, but, um, never get rid of them. Right. So, but in 07, um, I was building a hundred, well, not in 07, but before that we sold our business in 05, I was building a hundred homes a year and, uh, selling them, had a, had a Remax realty company and a construction company for years. And so I was never, you know, that was my mindset, building, selling, and everything that comes with raising four children. So soccer, uh, ball, everything. So I was just a normal working father of four children that was overworked and never thought about UFOs, never before that like most like most religious people out there and, and you were you know you're a very uh, uh firm believer in god and and you have a real religious side to you did you believe that they were demons coming from the stars much like people have portrayed in the bible well you know that was the crazy thing because you know i was raised to believe that way and here i am sick with Crohn's for 17 and a half years. And I was ready to give up on life. I lost my business. I couldn't operate it anymore. I I just sick for two years so bad I couldn't get out of bed. And so I was, I had to sell the company at a loss. Um, and here I am 46 years old with, with no future and four kids and I'm, I'm, I'm at the bottom of the barrel now. What do I do? So I start crying out. Uh, secretly inside and uh, even though I was um, trying to build a house the first one in 07 and had these guys fishing and my son there I wasn't in sync with them I was all I was thinking about was I need help Lord help me and so it was that mindset and that prayer that brought these lights out of the sky that took the crones away and now here I am, I just had this experience of these these big balls of fire came out of the sky, took me away for four hours, brought me back, and I wanted to tell the world, look what happened. Well, I found out real quick, nobody wanted to hear it. If they believed me, it was a demon. And so here comes the church, and they, when I leave, they would come and sprinkle holy water around my property, and and they're like, you're messing with Satan. I'm like, I wasn't praying to Satan. I was praying to God. So something's wrong here. And 
so it remodeled my whole belief system from you know a life a lifetime of being raised in a Christian fundamentalist church to all of a sudden meeting a lady from the Catholic side, you know, what they call the Virgin Mary. Um, it was just so bizarre. It, it changed my whole life of the way that I see this religion, faith. And I just have to say, it's probably, I'm probably stronger now in my beliefs than before. If that that doesn't surprise that, that doesn't surprise me, but you know when you have that experience where you know you, you were a trusted member of your church and your community, and we all of a sudden see you know people had never questioned your faith or your belief in God or or anything along those lines up until this point how like I, I don't even know how to ask this, but but was it was it difficult for you to try and get people to comprehend that yes, I was praying to God, I wasn't pr- praying to any demons. I, you know, we have things going on here that I cannot explain or understand, you know, because that had to be, you know, a, a big fight that you were not expecting from the people who you know and trust and love. Absolutely was that's that was the hardest thing for me. Uh, the hardest thing was that my family and friends and all turned on me and they, they wanted to say, okay, well, he's mentally insane. Um, we can't believe him. Uh, if he saw lights, it was a, the, the devil or a demon, uh, or he either he's crazy and he didn't see lights. But then my son saying I saw lights. Well, then it has to be a demon or the devil you're dealing with. So that's, I had, I got it both ways. And the UFO world, they didn't want me involved. Um, one of its biggest players, I'll never forget, posted on my Facebook about 10 years ago um, on my Facebook saying, we don't need your input. We already got it all figured out. Because I was saying my experience was spiritual, right? I've always maintained it was, I was praying. It came out of the sky. They took me away. They brought me back. And I'm not sick anymore. So how do you process that? What just happened to me? Why did they come? Why did they leave me in this situation? Now here I am. Nobody believes me. Um, the, the, the church says I'm dealing with the devil. The UFO world says I'm crazy because it's not spiritual. It was a Pleiadian flying a S-27B star cruiser or some kind of something, you know. So I didn't know where to go. And that's when the government folks came and they filled in a gap that... Um, is still filled to this day. And that's why I'm so pro-government. It was the only place I could find any sanity and um, no threats, just true people that want to learn, that want to, you know, make me feel like somebody. Yeah, you what you saw was real. Now let's figure out what it was. Not like, you know, the UFO investigator that comes and knows absolutely nothing. I'm dealing with people that have yes. all the, the toys. Chris, I'm going to ask you, you had your case investigated by the MUFON star team. And for people who do not know what the star team is, MUFON is a, has this private investigatory journalist, I know I'm going on uh, Zoolander there, but has this in private uh, investigative group that goes on out and they cover these cases that are, you know, not kept in the regular open move on files. And yours was one of them. And when it was investigated, they didn't treat you very well. What happened there? Actually, we were the first one, the first uh, star team case. And they were, that was put together by Bigelow, believe it or not. And, and, um, Bigelow was paying their salary and that, that funding when all that money came through. 
uh, from Congress. So we were like their first case, our team case. But their pet, they were a rapid response team that supposed to have money behind them where most UFO researchers are on their own penny. With MUFON, you know, you join, you go do investigations on your own money. You give them all the documents and so on. Well, star team uh, investigators are are employed, you might say. Some of them were by MUFON. They were paid to um, to leave at any time to go to uh, on a case. And I actually ended up getting five or six of those guys. They all just came all at one time. But then two days, they're all at the house. And they come from everywhere. So it was a whole bunch of them from MUFON. Um, you know, James Carrion from Colorado to Norm Gagnon from Maryland to uh, Richard Lang. He came from Homeland Security out of Virginia through Charlotte. He supposedly lived in Charlotte. And shoot, I don't know who all else. There were quite a few of them, and they were they were pretty. Um, in fact, I hate. I got to where I didn't want them coming back. They just treated us like we were. Um, yeah, I felt like I was in court. Like they were going to throw me in jail or something. They're just not very nice. Continual some- questions. Yeah, what were some of those questions that they were asking you? Because it it was almost like they weren't there to try and believe you, but more so there to try and and uh, and debunk your case like it wasn't true. Well, that's what their that's what their mission was. Um, you know, get the evidence and debunk the source, and that was their mission there for a while at least that that's what they tried to do and they did a pretty good job it it really irritated me bad because i was supposed to have some kind of creative control or at least say they didn't give me any of that they didn't they didn't show any evidence that they had found uh from burnt marks on the ground to stuff in the trees and other witnesses and you know there were eight other people in our community that all saw it that night so all of that could have been put in this show and the whole outcome would have been different than the way they tried to make it my friend jim told me he knew the minute it was published it was a hack job why do you think they targeted you that way well, at that time, you know, before 2016, the government was still denying it. There was no way that uh, the the military or anybody would say we've ever investigated. Since Blue Book, we care nothing about a UFO. That was always the case of the government. You couldn't, uh, man, I could never say I was working with somebody from the government ever until 2016. That's when they changed their whole um, everything. The government actually uh, admitted that it was real in 2016. And so that changed everything. It changed it for me. Um, And and I actually um, just think about this, a, a database, a place that collects the data, uh, and it doesn't matter how much data. It's just if it's on a postage stamp uh, to a whole volume, that somebody wrote up on each case. That data, no matter how small, is very important to an algorithm and a computer that they keep cramming this stuff into. So their whole deal is get the data and debunk the case. That was that was normal mission up into 2016. And you think that was the case with MUFON as well? Sure. I mean, that's top secret stuff. The UFO, the UFO subject 
I've been told is the most top secret thing on planet Earth, period. Far above anything with the, uh, the Department of Energy. Even. And so, you know, if they got the data, they're ne- surely not going to they're not going to share it with us and they'll hide it. It disappears. It's like Tom DeLong in the metal, right? He's got some metal. Turns out to be really good stuff. What happens? The government says it's classified. Can't share it with anyone. Chris Bledsoe is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Chris, who was your savior in this? Okay, outside of your own personal beliefs uh, and religion, but who is your savior in the scientific community that really took you under their wing and said, you know what, Chris, we believe you and we want to learn more and gave you the credence and the and the ability to to believe that your experiences were real, that you have been telling the truth. Who gave you that strength? Well, it would be a number of people. Uh, the first one would be Dr. Pavenmeyer when he came in, in 08. And, you know, he came three or four times a year, every year from then on. But there are other people, um, some I can't mention. Um, Diana's friend, if you hear Diana talk about the book she wrote, they had a guy named Tyler in there. Tyler Diana is Pisson. one of them. Yes, I introduced Diana to Tyler. Took me almost two years to get her to meet him because she was so afraid of the guy. But he was somebody that I I respected a lot, and he spent time with my family and children, and he helped the family out. Then there was Jim Simivan. You know, I think everybody knows who Jim is. He's a very close friend of mine, and my children. Um he and his wife did. And so those are the kinds of people that are on my friend list. Those are who, um, for the last eight years, I've been behind the scenes um, talking with these kinds of people and learning things, things that I can't share. But I think eventually everybody will will get to know. When you look at the, the list of people, when somebody of the scientific community comes up to you or or government affairs, whoever it may be, whatever alphabet agency they may be a part of and says, Chris, we know that you have experienced something phenomenal and we believe you. What kind of stress did that take off your shoulders that finally you were getting some sort of respect for what you had gone through, considering that it had been nonstop aggression towards you? Well, that it actually began in 08 when Dr. Pavemeyer came, and he started reassuring my wife and children that uh, I wasn't lying, that it was happening. And um, he actually went to my family, my mother, my dad, and different people. And, and I'll never forget Jim. Um, came for my birthday a few years back and and one of my boys was um man he had a hard time with it in school getting picked on his dad being labeled crazy and everything and so he went off to college he didn't want to come home he was embarrassed about his father but and, and their friends all my kids their friends um they would you know they they my kids experience the stuff with me, right? They see it too. So now they're a hundred percent on my side and they're telling their friends at school, um, you know, my dad's not crazy. We did see lights. We see them. Well, I'll never forget one night. Jim said, said, um, we all went out to eat. It was on my birthday. And he told the boys, he said, call all your friends all your high school buddies and get them to the house tonight. And so we were out back, lit a big fire. And uh, I think there were probably 20 kids that come up. Some of them were police officers that had graduated the academy and they were first year officers. There were three of them come up in police cars and all my kids' friends. And he set them down and told them, 
he said, and he showed him who he was. And, uh, and before that night was over, all those kids were looking up to me like I was something special after that night. So that's, that's the government that, that I talk about that I enjoy. And, uh, I have to say I've been here to help when nobody else would, when the UFO, relentless UFO crowd just nonstop bashing you, bashing you, bashing you. And then you got people like that that care. So it's a no-brainer. Chris Bledsoe is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We have about another two and a half minutes before we need to go to break at the top of the hour. Chris, as people started to believe your story and and understand that you've been telling the truth with what happened to you all along, did your encounters start to increase as word started getting out? Yeah, it did. It, it 100% did, and that was especially in 2012. Um when you know i had this experience with this this lady from that point on everything changed i mean you know i've had as many as 20 people with me uh, in other words i go to different different groups around my state north carolina i can drive two hours to charlotte two hours to to goldsboro greensboro um, Raleigh, Durham, Duke, all these areas are an hour or two from me. And so there are groups of people that, uh, that like to host the party for a Saturday night, sky watching, they'll call me and have me come over. And usually there'll be anywhere from six to 20 people. And there's one group in Raleigh that are doctors at Duke and they're nurses that you know, it's their people they run with. So they invited me out one night. And we're on the, the the dam at Falls Lake in Raleigh, the only dark place around. You can drive down in the woods to a, to a parking lot. And there's 20 people standing there and all in the doctor field, and nurses field. And um, we had something appear 100 yards away and about 10 feet above the trees and big as an ice cream truck. I mean, right in front of everybody. I sat there about two or three minutes and just flew away. And, it's, and it came because of asking it to. Not just showing up, but asking it to show up, to share it with these people. So I've got Chris, a I'm, big group. Yeah, uh, perfect. But go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Chris, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break at the top of the hour here. Experiencer Chris Bledsoe is our guest tonight. He has had amazing encounters since 2007, been able to summon in craft. The government takes him seriously. The alphabet groups take him seriously. Major scientists around the United States and major universities take him seriously. Yet the UFO community does not. We'll continue with his experiences right after this in Hour 2. Are you an experiencer of something strange that can't be explained? Do you want help finding out what's going on? I'm Ryan Stacy, head of the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We've teamed up with Spaced Out Radio to investigate cases filled out in the SOR Sightlines Report. We are independent, and there's no cost to what we do. All we need is your experience. Let's find out what's happening together on the SOR Sightlines Report. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR Space Traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best-rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up. All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi there, this is the Paranormal Lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the Paranormal Lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do? What to do? Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauce has come in three flavors. The burning bumble. F- Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend. Woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com.
We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye! Hi. This is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Second hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to welcome back everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates across the United States and Canada, along with the digital side on TalkStream Live, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Revolution Radio as well. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Quidditative. Quidditative is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com. we got a plethora of features for you, including reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, rocking out to Bumblefoot, and so much more. Don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter, the show, at Spaced Out Radio, and my personal handle, at Dave Scott SOR. Tonight we are talking about what it's like to experience an extreme phenomena of UFOs, ET contact. Chris Bledsoe is our guest tonight. Chris doesn't do a lot of interviews. However, he's chosen to come speak on our show because, well, he likes what we do, and he likes my hair. He likes my hair. <laughs> and I'm just going to put that bluntly. No, I'm, I'm teasing. Chris, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to uh, chat with you tonight, learn about your experiences. Well, I appreciate you having me, Dave. It's fun to be on and i do like your hair i think it's really cool <laughs> i appreciate that i do appreciate that, I had to throw that in. oh yeah. not a problem chris for people who may not be familiar with your story in 2007 you were you know walking back to your vehicle to grab something while you were out with the boys and your son fishing when you saw an orb that really really changed your life next thing you know you were gone for four and a half hours Everybody is looking for you, including your son, who ended up being tracked down by a couple of ETs. What did these ETs look like that you were dealing with? Um, those were, um, if the best way I could describe it, is like a four-year-old child, about that size. Um, not the great big um, eyes like you would think, um, but bigger eyes than normal, uh, but more, you know, kind of a, a hybrid between what you would think is a gray. I, I see a lot of people draw those and, or, you know, depict that's what they were seeing. Well, it wasn't like that. It was more human looking than, um, but glowing, glowing bright, um, the color of the moon. Uh, the, their heads were a little bit larger than normal, but um, not great, giant, big like you know some people say. But they were, they were the proportions were normal, like a child. But they were wearing something white, uh, a suit of some sort, I would suppose, that 
made their body look like uh, glass or chrome. You know, just the the glare from the the body. It actually looked like glass or something very polished and emitting a glow about the color of the night. And I've taken a picture of two of these entities um, and I have a video of one walking and it's so dark it's hard to see that one is good. But the pictures are fairly clear from that same, from about 20 feet away. And they look like ghosts, almost like a ghost when you see them. They can, they can become more solid to where they look like completely you and I, or they can kind of turn themselves back. I, I, the best way I'm thinking in my mind is a, a, a dimmer switch on a light. They have that ability to phase into us and phase out. I actually have a video where you can see them. See this entity come out of the orb in a flash, and now it's translucent when it comes out and it moves out of the screen. So when they come here, they're still translucent. What did their faces look like? Um, like a, like, um, I actually painted it in 2009, this little being, and I only had a good one minute or so with it. Uh, it was terrifying and I looked the best I could look at detail without you know, completely falling apart. I was afraid uh, I surrendered to it. I thought it was going to kill me. I mean, I really thought it was it. And it, and, it, and it said in my head, it said, I'm here to help you, not hurt you. And, um, but it looks like a child, a cross between a child and a gray, maybe, like you'd see people depict. Not full blown gray, but. Yeah. Or, or childlike. Chris, I got to ask, okay, in regards to the fact that this being said, I'm here to help you, not to hurt you, we have been indoctrinated with the idea that ETs are bad, ETs are here to take over the planet, they're here to disrupt <coughs> humankind, here to take things over. We've also heard that from a number of UFO investigators and people out there who are are trying to push a negative agenda. I mean, how much did that mess with your mind when this ET is sitting here telling you, "No, no, no, Chris. You know, we're we're here for the good, not the bad. You know, we're we're just here to help you on out." You know, that had to feel a little bit intimidating because of the reputation that everybody has with extraterrestrials. Well, I was the most confused human in the world there for the longest time because, you know, I, I was truly sick and ready to, to give up on life and to to um, to be on my uh, knees at one time in the woods crying out, Lord, help me. What do I do? How do I feed my children? Where do I go from here? And then this light up here there were three of them and uh, they came and they took me and they 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 took the crumbs away so imagine Dave the agony that I'm in that I'm telling my community and my church that I was praying and this ball of fire comes out of the sky takes my crumbs away now I've got more problems than I had before then nobody wants to believe me Everybody's calling me a liar, um, you know, or I'm dealing with the devil. I was praying. I, you know, I wasn't praying to to Satan. I was praying like I was always taught to pray. So the confusion sat in, and it, right. it really, it really had me for the longest time. It took me five, right. six years to to understand it better. Right. Yeah. So with that, and, and as you are, as you are trying to uh, figure things out and, and get things going in your own head with everything that has happened, and you're having these beings, you're having these, these people out there who are, who are trying to help you. I mean, 
did they all come at once or is it the same group that is continuing to to um how can i put it continue to visit you or have you had experiences that with other types of beings that you just can't understand well i i've had uh let's just say i don't know if i can understand it um all of what's going on because there's so much to it, Dave. The, uh, immediately after the thing happened on the river in 07, immediately mm-hmm. uh, we go home and weird stuff and the house starts happening. First off, we have three owls that take up home in the trees around the house for a month. There's owls in our yard every night hooting every single night of the week for you know, and it got so that it was annoying trying to sleep. That was the first weird thing. And then uh, we started seeing a flash of light inside the house, just a flash, like a flash bulb from a camera. And all of a sudden, here's a, a, a shadowy entity walking down the hall or two of them. And my kids are seeing this. My wife is seeing this. And orbs uh, blue orbs and golden orbs and all color orbs you know small orbs we never saw those before i saw orbs on the river which they were craft undoubtedly 40 50 feet big but now i'm seeing orbs as small as a basketball what is that i'm asking i mean so for the next several years i became the orb guy everybody knew me as the orb guy because i'm taking pictures of these balls of light and i have no clue how that uh had anything to do with what happened on the river in 2007 so it's just amazing the amount of different types of uh, things that started happening and are still happening to this very day and it's like second nature now um it can still scare you because it did me last easter but um it's just amazing the different types of ghostly things toothbrushes i brush my teeth tonight i get up in the morning my toothbrush is gone ask the wife where's my toothbrush i haven't seen it well next morning she's like you got my toothbrush no i haven't seen it so now we have to go buy new ones Or we're all sitting together and a five-pound shell, seashell, hops up off of a a shelf and just goes across the room. So all this happened after 2007. A a myriad of everything, not just lights in the sky, but ghosts and, and shadowy beings and things moving and things appearing uh, a porch. I started getting marbles out of the bags full. I probably have found 40. Found two this week. They just show up out of nowhere. Here I'm, I'm walking and there's one on the ground. Or I walk in and uh, I look in this drawer and I find a pair of socks and there's a marble there. How does it get there? You know, so... It's, Strange stuff, Dave. It never stops. And um, now I just see them as, as um, like a relationship, you might say. I explained that to Dr. Bob. I know they're out there. I know they're in the sky. I know they're listening. I know they're there every time I go out. Whether you want to talk to me or not tonight is up to you, but that's kind of the approach I take. I'm I'm talking to them in my head as we're going outside. And sometimes they show and sometimes they don't. But recently it's been a lot more. Well, I don't know if you just send some aliens over here, but I just typed in our YouTube chat room that um, I just had my arm touched. There's nobody in my studio. Oh, there was a there was a quick breeze that just went right by my left side, and it felt like my arm just got touched, like a hand on my I arm. would, I would confirm that very possible. I, that's it happens, 
I mean, how do you how do you equate that with a UFO, right? That's the whole thing with me from the beginning. I'm praying. I need help. I get helped by UFOs. Okay. Um, so how does it all connect? You know, how? Why would an alien come from Pleiades to to heal me on a river fishing with a bunch of guys? It don't make sense. So you know, I've 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 struggled with that from the beginning, and all my science friends all struggle with that as well. Uh, so so it's a big question. I, I'm just curious, you know, in regards to the contact that you have and the ability to summon these experiences that you are having, do you have the ability to do it any time you want, or do you have to look for signs up in the sky to try and figure out if if the timing is right? No, I just, I look at it differently when uh, this the best way I can explain it is that I know that they're all the time, all the time. And I know that they don't share themselves with just anyone. They won't show up for just anyone. If they're skeptical people, the naysayers in the bunch, we can all go home because it's going to ruin it for them, everyone. But certain people, um, like you or Bob or or different ones, for some reason it uh, it's not shy. So when I, my approach is, um, I look up at the sky and I know they're there. I envision them sitting there, invisible, because that's where they are. They're always you can't see them, but they're there. They're always there and they're listening. And you know, just I ask, okay, you can show yourself. My friends here, I want you to meet him. And all of a sudden, like little children, they start appearing everywhere. And here they come. And some of them get really close, you know. And some in the form of orbs the size of a, of a flashlight. They're flying through the trees. But those same orbs can get big as a beach ball or big as a car. They expand real quick. Uh, it's like they get excited. You get one excited, they all get, and they start showing off. Fly down the pond with sparks coming out of an orb. Really weird, but they do it. Some big, some small. Chris, you're when you see these beings, how often are you physically seeing these beings where there are you know, these these creatures, these aliens walking on your property? It's not very rare. I mean, it's not very common. That's kind of rare. The last time I saw it was um, last Easter Monday, which would be, what, today? Easter Monday night. We've had a terrible storm through here for two days, and I was kind of thinking we might have an experience over the weekend, but... um. The, with the entities is very rare. It's probably happened a half a dozen times in 12 years. But with the orbs, it's a lot. And I have the evidence to prove it. Pictures and videos and witnesses. But and the entities are, they're like ghosts. They, they look like ghosts. Not like full-blown, solid figures they look more like ghosts foggy so, um, smoky so how do we know that what we're seeing are actual aliens and not something maybe angelic well that's the way I see them as angelic beings um, I mean what are they I don't know but the reason I call them that is by the way they act spiritually they, they respond in a spiritual, prayerful, um, humble manner. That's how they interact with me, through that type of manner, through a spiritual way. Prayer, 
it was a friend at NASA told me a long time ago. He said, he said, you know, it's a little bit like the Bible says where more than one are gathered uh, together, uh, we'll hear. And he said, it's a lot like that. So, you know, people get out and try to meditate and do all that and summon them. Maybe it works. But that's not as personal to me. I, it's more of a personal relationship with individuals that I've come to, you might say, I've come to know they're always there. There's three of them, always three or six or nine. Do they, they come, come with three, other, you know, Yeah, do they come with other creatures too, whether it's creatures like Bigfoot or fairies or gnomes or anything like that? Well, I've heard that, and you know, I believe all that exists around us. We just can't see it. I think they're in a different uh, frequency than we are, and they're able to control it where we can't. And uh, uh, maybe a reason why Big Bigfoot can be in your presence and you can't see it, but they can leave a footprint on the ground right in front of you. Right? I've heard all kinds of things where they see them come out of a ball of light. I don't know, Dave. I've got a lot of pictures of orbs and video. And in those orbs are a lot of different entities from birds to dogs to cats to people. And they're all around us. They're tens of millions. You can see them. A lot of people get orb pictures. You know, the flash bulb of us show up a lot of orbs. And some people try to say they're all dust. Well, they're wrong. Not all dust. And it was not me that got me to filming orbs. It was scientists that got me to doing it. That's why I've got what, you know, I've been able to capture a lot of this. They knew I could, but they told me mm -hmm. what to do and how to get these pictures. And uh, so that's what I've been doing, you know, all these years. Is, is recording this stuff and sharing it with scientists. We've got about one minute here before we need to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Chris Bledsoe is our guest tonight. Chris, with all the evidence and, and the things you are getting, with whether it's the orbs or the mists or these beings that are traveling in threes, sixes, or nines, have you noticed a pattern that goes along with them? And we got about 35 seconds. I don't know if I've noticed a pattern. Um at all there um i can't say i know a pattern there anything that i could you know say for sure it always for leaves sure you with always more, there yeah it always leaves you with more questions than answers doesn't it yeah it definitely does do you ever get sick of that no um I do, but I don't. I know it's coming. Truth is coming, and they're going to push it. You know, that was part of something I told last year that, right. that uh, my experience at Easter with this entity was that there's going to be a revealing, and they were going to. Well, let's learn it. about that revealing when we get back on Spaced Out Radio. Chris Bledsoe continues with his amazing amazing extraterrestrial story after this on Spaced Out Radio. We're taking Sunday nights out of this world on Spaced Out Radio. This is Michael W. Hall, also known as the Paranormal Lawyer. Together, we're going to go on an exciting journey into the unknown. I'm going to bring you some of the best interviews in the paranormal and supernatural to start your new week off on a freaky note. So tune in to Spaced Out Sundays with me, Michael W. Hall, only on SpacedOutRadio.com. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. 
For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. From the heartlands of Canada to beards around the world, we know how to take care of you. Fill your follicles with the Mighty Moose Beard Oil. All our oils and balms are handmade and 100% natural ingredients because we care about your beard. And hey, use the promo code SOR2019 and get your Mighty Moose Beard Oil today. You can check us out on our website, MightyMooseBeard.com. weekend supernatural fix look no further than spaced out saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com i'm stacy edwards and i'm john edwards each saturday night stacy and i are going to bring you the best in paranormal cryptids ufos you name it and we're going there it's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you so tune us in every saturday night on spaced out saturdays starting at 906 p.m pacific 1206 a.m eastern only at spacedoutradio.com Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble, we're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby and tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hey, space travelers, this is John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. 
Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. At spacedoutradio.com, we are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. past the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to remind everybody that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot, reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, and much more. And also, don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show. My personal handle, at Dave Scott SOR. Give us a follow. Tonight we are talking about a wonderful ET experience that has been going on since 2007 with Chris Bledsoe, who is our guest tonight. Chris, welcome back. Thank you, Dave. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you here, too. Now, you had a little bit of a revelation one year ago today that really, really defined everything and a lot of questions that you had. What happened the Easter weekend last year? Um. Well, you know, as everyone knows, I've been quiet um, behind the scenes, not talking, working for the last eight years or since 2012, kind of behind the scenes. And I had no intention of coming out and uh, until this option agreement that I've signed on a, a, a television program that... Um, is in the works right now. So in other words, I had no plans to come forward and until the TV show brought it all out. Right. And, um, that's been like that for seven and a half years. So I've had that along with government scientists that I've worked with that, um, that's kept me quiet. And so last year on Easter Monday, it was Monday afternoon about, I don't know, it was, a, it was an hour after dark. I uh, walk outside. Uh, I live in a little cabin on a pond and on a, about 15 acres. It's private here with a gate you come in. And so um, my back porch, I can fish off the back porch. I mean, literally six feet from the water. So I walk out the back door and above the trees on the far side of the pond, um, you know, a couple, 300 feet up in the air appears, uh, this orb appears. The minute I opened the back door, it appeared. And I knew it uh, was reacting to me because it started getting excited and started flashing very bright and growing in size. And it got up to about the size of a, a beach ball, I guess. And here it comes out of the air, down through the tops of the pine tree, and spiraling in a spiral all the way to the ground on the other side of the pond. And now I knew it saw me. I knew it was coming. I had two dogs with me. They were, um, they were seeing it as well. And so I pulled my cell phone out and turned it on and pointed it at this thing and it on the other side of the pond. And now it's jumping up and down 10 feet in the air. It was going, if you could imagine seeing a ball of light go up and down like a ping pong ball bouncing and it would turn from um it would turn from white to yellow to red in those colors and i was terrified because i knew that um it, it was some sort of entity and if it got too close to me it could make me 
more sick. And uh, I was just, just believed that I got this rheumatoid from getting too close to this stuff. And uh, that's been told to me by, it came all the way from the Pope, uh, believe it or not. So about eight or nine minutes into seeing this orb on the other side of the pond, and is jumping up and down in that eight or nine minutes, it starts to come towards me. Now here it is coming across the pond, jumping straight up and down. Um, and it gets about 25 feet away from me. And now I'm, I'm terrified. Um, my dog is barking. I look up at my phone thinking I'm recording this thing and I never hit record. I just, just looking at it with my cell phone and thinking I'm recording the whole time. But the minute that I noticed that I didn't hit record, when I hit the record button, the orb didn't leave. Or this entity is a full blown entity there. It didn't go anywhere. It stayed right in place. And for the next 18 minutes, I filmed it sitting in the middle of my pond, 25 feet from me. And it would come on at its feet and it would go off. It would come on at its waist and it would go off and it would come on up about its head or shoulders and it would go off. So I've got that 18 minutes of it. And what it did is it told me, it said, and I heard it loudly, uh, the whole 18 minutes I was sitting there, it just became a knowing. It said, now it's chapter two, it's time to tell your story. Things are about to happen, which is going to uh, bring about the revealing of sorts. It said, we're going to uh, show up in bigger numbers and make it impossible for the world not to know. We're going to help you through camera and um, through witness to prove this. And so I, after that happened, I told quite a few people what it said, including uh, my friend Jim Semivan and Dr. McGuire and different ones, telling them that it was going to increase this year and that the, the revealing has started. And believe it or not, last week um, in California, they had a big flap out there in Mexico. They filmed this stuff. And then again in Detroit this week. And so it's starting to show up um, in a lot of places. A lot of people are seeing it. And it's only going to get more and more. And uh, so that's, that's why I told the story, Dave. That's why I went public. Immediately, I picked the phone up, and I thought, I've got to tell this now. I didn't call Hollywood. I didn't call my manager. I didn't call anyone. I just picked the phone up, and I looked who was the last one that texted me wanting to interview, and that was uh, Chant Hannah, which I'd never met. And I texted her and said, you want to do an interview? And, boy, that's when it. I did that. I get a phone call, and it's now I'm with Richard Dolan, and I'm with Jimmy Church, and now I'm on with you. But all that, all this is because of that entity appearing at Easter last year and saying, now go tell the story. So I'm just following what I'm being told to do. How do you trust that message for people who may not understand well, uh, 13 years of living with it and seeing how it uh, has blessed my family. My kids uh, have received blessings. And I was told by someone up in the government that that was going to happen. They said, give it 12 years. After 12 years, you'll see. Blessings will start. And I swear to you, last this past year was 12 years and all of a sudden all my kids start getting blessings and everybody in the family uh crazy offers some jobs and it's my little girl's 22 years old 23 and she teaches music at nyu new york university making a hundred dollars an hour teaching music at 22. now whoever heard of such right all that happened after this entity came at Easter last year. 
So that's how I trust it, just knowing, just being around it, living it, and seeing the massive numbers of people I've talked to that have experienced this stuff. I have a thousand people that have called me or written me wanting to tell their story, too afraid to tell it publicly because of ridicule. And a lot of them will be 70 and 80 year old people. And I just listen. And I always let them tell me how it all started. And nearly every time, every time, it starts with tragedy. And that's a fact. Everybody's having these experiences. Go back and look where you were in your life when it started. Did you lose a friend, a mother, a dad? You know, did you, you know, what, what kind of heartache, suffering? And that's, that's where I found that triggers this thing the most, Dave, just trauma. So, you know, with that being said, that's why I trust it. I've been around it too long. I know it, you know. Do you think, Chris, that you are a little bit of an anomaly because there are a number of experiencers and people out there who have claimed to have some ridiculously painful experiences at the hands of extraterrestrials? I've heard that, but I've not seen any evidence. Um, You know, I think a lot of people make stuff up. And then maybe somebody's had those kinds of experiences. But I would be wondering where um, where their their mind is, where they what they're thinking. Are they grounded in any kind of faith or you know, because there's dark forces out there that I wouldn't yes. want there to get their hands on me. And that's what I'm saying. If you if you're in the wrong up, you might get the wrong thing. <clears throat> okay, so with that and the idea that people are having negative experiences as well, do you believe that in your personal case that because you have more of a direct faith with with God, which a lot of people are agnostic these days, that that is the reason why you have been shown almost a mercy in your encounters comparatively to other people. Uh, um, I don't know how to answer that best, Dave. Um, shoot, I wouldn't know how to answer that. Um, I just think it's it's timing. I think that it's time, it's, it's the end of the age, it's the beginning of Aquarius, it's, it's the end of time. The Bible talks about uh, the end of the age would be the end of time. In other words, they started the calendar over day one uh, mm-hmm. under Pisces when Jesus was born. So now the, the, that would be the end of that time period, and we're going into a new a new world, a new uh, awakening. So, I don't know. Are people ready for it? I think they're as ready as they're going to ever be. And with this this disease or virus going around, I don't think the world's going back the way it was. It's going to be forever different. And um, I think it's set the stage now for the revealing. That's what the entity said last year. Things are going to change. Um, there's going to be trouble ahead. And it's time for a revealing. Time to, to, to play, you know, to tell it. And, and we'll see where it goes, but I think they're going to show up a whole lot more and more all year. As the year goes along, you'll see more mass sightings of people. Um, cut from all around the world really Mm -hmm. i don't i don't make a lot of predictions but i'm making that one well i'm curious to get your your opinion on this then because you know we've talked on this show recently about the fact that i don't think people are ready uh because i mean look at how we're acting these days with the pandemic that is surrounding us 
people have gone into complete hysteria, at least at the beginning. The things have calmed down now. But, I mean, when you're going out and buying toilet paper and buying all the meat and, and you know, 10, 12 jugs of milk, knowing that, you know, you only got milk good for a few days... You know, I mean, the ridiculousness that has happened with the pandemic, I could just imagine what could happen with people who are not prepared for anything extraterrestrial. And I just can't help but think that there is no way on God's green earth here that people are ready for any sort of contact from the stars when we can barely handle thinking properly during a, a scenario like we're facing right now. Make you think, won't it, right? Um, I don't know. I think it's according to how it's told. If you tell the world like they did in, in Orson Welles in the 30s, you know, we're being attacked by this this ship from Mars with claws, and people went out and started shooting at water towers and everything. Uh, there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it. Um, you know, we tell the world that you got aliens that come in to eat us. They grow us for food and they're, they're taking people and stealing and killing and feeding on us. Well, that's one of the ideas that's being knocked around out there and I've heard it. But um, you tell that to the world and yeah, you'll lose us all. It'll, it's, and it'll be untrue. Mm-hmm. It's all about well, the truth. You have to tell the truth. How, how it affects us, you know, you can't deviate from the truth. Tell the truth, I think we're ready. Unfortunately, we have players in this game like Tom DeLong who've already tried that fear-mongering portion. And I know he's a friend of yours. I know you're in contact with him, and I'm not saying that as a shot to him. But that I mean, it, it is polar opposite of what you you just stated, my friend. Yeah, but when we're sitting together, he's asking me too, right? He don't know. He just filmed it. He got a good little video off the coast last week in that flap. Yes, he did. And he's and he's asking himself, you know, what in the world is it? What are we dealing with? And and you know, those things are forty foot long. Uh, and they're egg shaped or uh, tic tac shaped, and that's the exact same thing that I described in 2007—a 40 foot long egg shaped thing laying on its side, not standing up, but laying flat like a football or an egg, 40 foot, 45 foot. And by those descriptions, is what got uh, got government people that really knew. You know what they were looking at. They've been tracking this tic tac off the coast with submarines and and with uh, ships and so on. And so here's some boy down in North Carolina talking about an orange uh, 40 foot egg. Well, you can imagine here they come. And that's how it all started with me and and uh, some of these scientists. They knew I wasn't lying, and I was able to share it with them. You know, let them you know share the experience. John Alexander, he's a prime example. He's one of the most well-known UFO investigators out there. He's in. He's been in, I think, eighty or ninety countries, officially investigating UFOs. He's done it for the government forever and ever. Well, he comes to the house, and um. I got to share an experience with him and told him ahead of time, John, it's about to appear. It's here right now. And it did within 10 seconds. It appeared in front of him and I and my daughter and his wife. And, it, you know, it didn't fly over. It didn't come from, you know, a satellite. We're talking something that appeared in a flashing, pulsating ball of light. And then it got solid, as it always does. It comes in flashing. And once it gets here, it flashes for a minute, and then it stops and gets to be a solid ball of light, and it flew away. Well, that changed John. That changed his life. And he was on the phone calling people in Washington and everywhere at that very second. So there was a lot of people 
that know uh, about these experiences and that have been here and seen them. Very important people. What's the purpose of you wanting to show all these people about this, though, Chris? Is it for confirmation for yourself or the fact that you want your own personal answers to what is going on? It's because I made a deal with the lady. You know, she came and and I was in agony at that time because I wanted to tell it, but I'm being depressed and uh, oppressed by family and church and everybody. You're dealing with the devil, and I'm like, no, I'm not. And so when the lady came in 2012, uh, <clears throat> she well, she said, you know, I'm here. And I knew why. I knew because I had struggled. I'd let the world influence me into my thinking. And I would, you know, maybe I'm being fooled. Maybe demons came and healed me. Maybe demons answered prayer. I'm thinking all this crazy stuff. And, um, You know, she came to say, no, you're right. You you know your heart. Tell what you know, and I'll help you. And so I went to asking for help. And the first thing was the burning tree with Dr. Pasolka. She calls me and says, Hollywood wants to meet you. I'm like, I don't want to meet them people. They already ruined my life just about in, in those eight. And she said, you got to meet them. I said, well, I'd have to. I'd have to have a sign. So I go outside and I call, I asked the lady and I'd just seen her recently. Right. And it, you know, that can never forget that. And I said, you know, you said, you're going to help me. So here, uh, did you send these Hollywood people in my way for me to meet them? Should I meet them? This lady, um, uh, Dr. Pasaka, I met her two weeks after I met the lady. I would have never met Dr. Posoka had the lady come. I'm telling you, it would have never happened. And she's so important because we study together. She comes from the religious side. So the tree, um, I walk out on Thursday night and Diana's calling me all week. You come into Wilmington to meet these people. No, Diana, I haven't got a sign. She called me again. You come in? No, I, don't, I didn't get a sign. And then on Thursday night, my wife and I walk out back. It had been raining for two days and it was just misty and foggy. And about 75 or 100 yards back on the back of our property, this tree just erupts in the fire. So I called Diana and said, Here's your, I have, uh, I have the confirmation to come meet you. I'll see you in the morning. So you see, I've spent all these years asking this information to the stars, to the lady, to these entities, and they always have a way of confirming individuals. On that, and on that note, Chris, I'm going to get you to hold on because we're going to go to break here at the top of the hour. We have Chris Bledsoe, experiencer of the paranormal, supernatural, ufological, extraterrestrial. We have them for another 30 minutes on Spaced Out Radio. Then we will get to the Thought of the Dave and the SOR Newswire in Hour 3, a jam-packed third hour coming up on the Mighty SOR. Stay tuned. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. We are scouring the world for the most intriguing stories of your day. Take the time to read up on the SOR Newswire, where our team, led by Captain Shirk, will deliver to you some of the best paranormal and supernatural news, along with some stories that will blow your mind from the weird to the wacky. 
It's the news outside the news that piques interest, and that's what we're looking to deliver to you. The SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Hey everyone, I'm John Edwards. And I'm Stacy Edwards. Together we're taking over Saturday nights on Spaced Out Radio, where we're going to bring our own experiences of the paranormal and talk to the best people we can find to help bring you answers to your strange tales. We're here to entertain your need for weekend woo! So tune us in at spacedoutradio.com starting at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, where we can all get a little spooky together. Spaced Out Saturday nights right here at spacedoutradio.com. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hello everyone, this is Ryan Stacy from the Experiencer Support Association, otherwise known as TESSA. We're glad to team up with Spaced Out Radio to help investigate your experiences on the SOR Sightlines Report. Together, we'll investigate the strange sightings and occurrences you've had. We're looking for answers just like you. So fill out a Sightlines Report on the Spaced Out Radio website and let's figure out what's going on together. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month. And follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. The party is always on at the Moose Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is where you want to be when visiting Canada's west coast. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose cranks up the rock while serving some of the best rated food in the city. The menu starts at $6.95. Why party anywhere else in Vancouver when the Moose is right there? Get your horns up and rock with the Moose, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you'd know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. The SOR Vault is open for business, and do we have some cool swag for you to pick up? All you have to do is head over to our website and click on the SOR Vault. You have a variety of cool logos to choose from, and put them on anything you want. T-shirts, hoodies, hats, coffee mugs, you name it, we can get it to you. So do your shopping by supporting the store you love. Get your Spaced Out Radio swag at the SOR Vault today. Looking for creative ways to get your company out in the public? How about advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Our sales department is waiting to hear from you, and we can work around any budget. 
From commercial spots to banners to special promotions, there are many opportunities to get your name and product out to our SOR listeners. For a price guide and more information, please contact us at sales at space.radio.com. For the price of one cup of coffee a month, you can become an SOR space traveler. The Space Travelers Club is a place where you can interact with other listeners, either live during the show or on our great forum. We want your stories, pictures, comments, and ideas. You'll get live video streams, exclusive content, and be a part of our newsletter. Stay in touch with everything SOR. The Space Travelers Club is just 5 bucks a month at spacedoutradio.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. I'm feeling a little spicy tonight. What to do, what to do. Why not get Bumblefoot? Four million Scoville units of pure hard rock. Bumblefoot hot sauces come in three flavors. The burning bumble. Tone it down a bit with Bumblelicious and throw the sauce on everything. Spice it up. Bumble me, baby. Bumblefoot hot sauce. Get it today at kajans.com. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio is underway tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to say hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, along with the digital side of TalkStream Live and Revolution Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Quidditative. Quidditative is your password. Use it wisely, space travelers, as the clam sets a password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and staying up to date on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter during the show, hashtag Spaced Out Radio, at Spaced Out Radio for the show, and my personal handle, at Dave Scott. SOR. For the final time tonight, we introduce Chris Bledsoe. He has had some amazing experiences the last almost 13 years since 2007. He has been visited. He has been able to summon. He has proven to many people who have visited him that this phenomena that is going on is real. Top scientists across the United States have studied him. The government has studied him in the United States. It's a phenomenal story. Chris, welcome back. Thank you, Dave. Glad to be here, brother. My friend, I know it's a touchy subject, all right, because there's so much you cannot say. However, I am going to ask you, in regards to the way you have, uh, you know, kind of propped up the United States government and, and some of their officials who have been in contact with you and really helped you understand what is going on, what do you think it is they want from you? Well, it's all dealing with national security, right? Um, and their their whole intentions um, are to find out what we're dealing with. They want to know just like you and I want to know. And um, so you would naturally think that um, the people that protect this country would be involved in these this to some extent, wanting to know what we're dealing with. So um, that's the best way I can answer that. They 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 want to know what we're dealing with, just like we do. But they come at it more from a national security standpoint. You know, is it a threat? Is it a is it about the Bible or is it about something uh, in between that? I don't know. We're all trying to learn. Is all. Everybody's in it for the same. 
Have they been open with you about what you've seen and been able to explain anything to you? Well, not that they explain to me. It's more that we have general, um, in other words, they pick my they pick my brain, right? And I try to pick theirs the same. But it's usually always the same thing. It's just like you and I. Well, maybe they have parts. Maybe they have something that they found somewhere, like Dr. Pasolka talks about. But they have no clue how it works. And um, they have no clue of what it is we're dealing with. They want to know just like you and I. And I hate to break the UFO world's heart, believing that we have nine space rock, uh, space traveling machines locked away in S4B or Area 51. Um, I'm sorry, but I just don't believe all that based on the people that I know and the people that I have dealt with. And that goes deep all the way to Lockheed Martin. Let's just put it that way. Do you feel that you're the only one in this situation that they are checking on out? Or do you feel there are others like you that they are following as well, but they've maybe not become public as you have? Uh, I think that they've met a lot of people. I don't know who else they would be studying. Um, you know, I never asked that question, but I do know there are other people that they've um, they've investigated quite a few. But you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I just know that they're they've been around me for and my family for the better part of thirteen years, and they're not going anywhere. They're still there, and. Uh, it's very comforting because I can dial them up if I feel threatened at all. And I've had to. I'm going to, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was saying I've had to, I've been threatened before and I've had to make some phone calls to, to get that pressure off of my family. There's some crazy people out there. And A couple questions from government. our audience. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's not the government. It's it's private people who have threatened you about your experiences, correct? Right. All right. A couple questions from our audience. Vinny is asking, Chris, are there any other experiences that you like to hear about or like to talk about that you've had? Uh, I don't know that there's just so many that's happened. Um, not any particular one. I mean, if my children were on here or my wife, or, or they would love to chime in and we'd get together. We'd kind of come up with, do you remember this time or that? Um, I don't know what would be the one experience that tops it all. Um, just the recent one was very special to me it was with Dr. McGuire and I like to let him tell it, but you know, he's, he came here and he called, he wrote me on Thanksgiving and asked me uh, if it would be possible for he and his wife to come pay a visit. And, um, I told him, I thought so. I actually went to praying about it over, over New Year's because Bob was coming to, to talk about trying to record some of this stuff he's creating a new company uaptn that's uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon tracking so um he comes and just to talk about it you know just to meet and to hang out and have fun and it was rainy and cloudy for the, most of the weekend but on sunday night it cleared up and we go out and i just uh told Bob I'd had good response over New Year's asking if I should work with him and that I got a good, uh, you know, good response. So, yes. And so I asked in front of him um, on Sunday night, 830. And within a minute or two, here the first thing starts flying over. And for the next hour, it was pretty intense with uh, 
orbs in the tree and um he'd have to tell the story but that that was a very uh satisfying experience for for me to share with dr mcguire because it changed his life and his wife has experienced some stuff uh, afterwards that is is wonderful i think she was was um experienced some healing effects from from this experience he had here and uh, I don't want to tell too much of that. I leave it for him to tell, but that's what you know. I love about this thing. That's why I like sharing it. I've spent my whole last eight, nine years trying to help people that are sick. You know, introduce them to this and ask, "Would you help this person?" And I've seen it happen more than one time where people get blessings. So I trust it. All right, let's get to another question here. This one from A. Bauman, who is asking, if these beings are angelic, why do you have to be afraid? Shouldn't the angels be able to protect you? Well, yes, but if you study, uh, if you study with like Dr. Pasolka, why she's so important, Um, I met her and she's one of the leading angelic scholars in the world. And nearly every experience biblically with an angel was a horrible, terrifying experience. Horrible, scary. Uh, None of it was never really good. In fact, there's a story about St. Paul or Saul on the road to Damascus when a light supposedly appeared and, and blinded him. Well, the truth in his first handwriting, Paul said that uh, a ball of light came out of the sky, knocked him off his horse, took him up to the third level of heaven. He thought they were demonic entities. They put a thorn in his side, which is an implant, and he tried to dig it out, and it would move about. And then after a while, he realized what he was dealing with was angelic beings. This is all firsthand Paul, uh, the guy that wrote Acts in the Bible. You won't read it in ours, but Dr. Pasolka as uh, as access to this information, first-hand writings of Paul. So it's always been written about for, for forever, you know. So uh, angelic beings are not necessarily the little babies with the bow and arrows, you see, cute little babies. I would think they were more like what we experienced on the river that night. He's glowing into these with a triangle on his chest. Right. What did the triangle look like? It looked like a, you know, this, this entity is three and a half, four feet tall, and on its chest has a, has a dark, um, you know, this thing's glowing like a light bulb, but in its chest I could see a black or dark-looking triangle, um, probably six or eight inches tall and uh, you know i drew it it's a little taller than a normal triangle but it had a triangle on its chest and that got a lot of attention i can tell you from the powers that be because what we do know is that and the artifacts that dr pasoka talks about there's a particular artifact that i've seen that has that triangle stamped inside of it it's on this I beam, these purple hieroglyphics you talk, you hear about. I've seen that. I have seen it firsthand, and it has the same triangles. And I asked, what does that mean? And they tell me it was from the universal creation of life is what it means. Joe has a question That's- for you. He He is asking, Chris... Have you ever been told or have you asked the aliens when they will uh, reveal themselves? Well, uh, yeah, I've asked them that, but, you know, I'd I'd never get that basically uh, an answer on that kind of question. But they did tell me last year this entity at Easter came and said, we're going to do a revealing of sorts. So... 
I don't know when it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen, and it already is happening based on the flat, you know, from California last week and and Detroit, and it's only going to grow. It's going to get more so to where people can't avoid it. In other words, this is what they're telling me. They're going to force the issue, and they're going to help us. It's got to be told the right way. It can't be told as a lie to scare the people. Follow up from Joe. He is asking, in regards to that triangle that you just talked about moments ago, did it have two horizontal lines on it? Now, with Joe, I always like to make fun of Joe because he refuses to admit he's a contactee, which he is. Well, I I have... um... Uh, I have seen three different triangles. When I was taken on board the craft, there were symbols inside the craft or this ball of light that took me. There were there were symbols, and I drew them, recorded them. And there were a couple of triangles, one with two horizontal lines and one with a dot above it. But the one on the beam is like a triangle with a circle around it. That was the one that stuck in my head the most, a a triangle with a circle around the triangle. And So if you were to, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I was told by my friends from the aerospace industry that that, and this is very important, that that is the universal symbol uh, of creation of life, the universal creation of life, the symbol of it. Maybe these beings are known throughout the universe. Maybe that's their symbol. Have you ever been told where they come from? I heard 50 million light years from here. Is uh, That's the only place I've heard. I know that there's an artifact that I've had in my hands. I've held some of this stuff. And I was told it came from 50 million light years away. And it can get here in two hours or less. And it don't crash. None none of them crash. It don't happen. If it was here, it was given to us as a gift. Now, that's a lot of secret I threw out there. It's, It's okay. What's it like to hold alien material? Uh, what does it feel like? Electrocuted me to first start with. I held two different parts at one time, uh, the inner core and the outer core, the lining piece. And by doing that, it created a connection and made me black out right in front of several people, including my whole family. They all saw it. Uh, but holding one piece is like feeling a piece of aluminum. But if you get the right two pieces, one in each hand, it, it, it gave me a big shock. How did you know they were alien materials? Were they given to you from these beings? No. No. Um, there were people. And we're getting a little sensitive here. I can't say much about. But right. Diana talks about it in her book. She talks about it. She, I was dealing with that long before her. And so um, I, I can't say no more there. No, I I understand that. I understand that. There's a... So for people who don't understand, Chris does have some NDAs that he or non-disclosure agreements that he has to follow and abide by for future projects that he is working on. So if he says he can't explain it, that is the reason why he's not trying to dodge the questions. That's, you know, when you sign an NDA, there's certain things you have to be able to to uh, dis- uh, hold off on. So that's kind of what it's at. We have about four minutes left with you, Chris. Uh, tonight okay. on the show, and it's been an absolute pleasure. In the end, what do you think the goal is for you? What What's this impact on your future? Uh, I think um, 
you know, I'm, I'm a happy father of four children, married uh, for 37 years this year, and uh, life's been good. Um, I don't see life like I used to. I used to have a lot of different desires uh, than this question you just asked me. Now, what am I supposed to do? What? Um, I'm just going to dedicate my time to sharing this subject and uh, hopefully over the next few years get people to understand that it's real, that um, I'm not trying to sell anybody on any one thing. Like I know what I'm talking about because nobody really knows. But what I do know is it's real and it's interacting and I have proven it and without a doubt. And I have the, the data to prove it without a doubt. So it's time to, to for the world to wake up and let people like Dr. Bob and different ones that are brilliant scientists so they can free up and start studying this stuff and and help us figure out what it is. That's, that's what I would say. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to help I want to bring the truth to the world any way I can. And what's the next step for you personally on this? Is it is it to continue your own experiments with them to see what's going on? Is it to bring in more people to try and figure it out as we got about two minutes left? Well, I think that um, I'm really busy working on some major projects that um, will play out over the next five or six years if this happens and it'll be something that'll be teaching this you know sharing it to the world and maybe an ongoing process you know what i'm saying like uh, ongoing uh, and i can't say much more there but i'm really busy involved in the, the disclosure side um with, with television and other things um Right. What would you like to say to the UFO community in regards to your situation and and either their criticalness or their their skepticism regarding the experiencer? Well, I'll speak to the people that uh, that the skeptics. I don't have time for. I don't even talk to them because it's not worth my time wasting my energy trying to prove something to somebody that they don't have the mental capacity to, to understand it. No matter how much you show them or tell them or prove to them, they'll always, um, they they can't get it. So they'll, they'll always be that skeptic. So I waste my time on people that want to know that, um, that, that's looking for answers and not looking for trouble. I would say, hang in there and watch the sky. It's gonna, it's gonna get more apparent to, uh, to us all to see in the sky. I'm sure of that. And hopefully, um, between now and the next four or five years, the truth will come out more and more to where. Um, we get serious scientists that are willing to, to to put their you know their name on the uh, not worry about getting ridiculed. In other words, a lot of scientists won't get involved in right. because they're worried about ridicule. I'm I hear you there, my friend. To bring the scientists in here and let's Chris. work together and pick it up. Chris, i got to say goodnight to you. Chris Bledsoe, everybody, stay in touch with him on Facebook. He'll be around more Spaced Out Radio coming up right after this. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. At spacedoutradio.com, 
We are keeping you up to date on all the news with the SOR Newswire. Captain Shirk leads the team that is bringing you the news of the day and exclusive stories on everything paranormal and supernatural. It's free to read, it's updated daily, and it's right there for you. The SOR Newswire is a one-stop shop for the news of the day. Check it out at spacedoutradio.com today. We're adding to the entertainment online for Spaced Out Radio. I'm Amber Beckard, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Cryptid Tales, where I will take you on a journey into some of the strangest legends and lore from around the world, relaying the stories to you of the strange creatures and experiences that people have had throughout time. You can find Cryptid Tales at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our free archives and leave a comment. See you there. Hey, Spaced Out Radio fans, it's John Rezig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. Our goal is to make the life of veterans, first responders, and those with rare medical conditions 10% happier. We do this by donating one grant item, ranging from dance to therapy programs to prosthetic limbs, to those who need it most. To contribute to Spaced Out Radio's official charity, head over to chivecharities.org and become a donor today. Are you looking for great advertising value for your company? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. We have a multitude of places to get your name out there, including commercial ads during the show, special promotions, and banners on our website. Our audience is proven to support the companies that support our show. We can make your budget work for you. For more information, please contact us at sales at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is the paranormal lawyer, Michael W. Hall. I'd like to invite you to listen in each Sunday night where we're going to open up your eyes to everything strange and paranormal. I will be hosting some great guests with topics that affect us all, such as UFOs, ghosts, and everything paranormal. Let's learn together on Spaced Out Radio Sunday with myself, Michael W. Hall, the paranormal lawyer at spacedoutradio.com. Hello, space travelers. It's me again, Carl. Don't forget to join the Space Travelers Club for just five bucks a month and follow Spaced Out Radio on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Our Instagram, Dave Scott SOR. Our Facebook page is Spaced Out Radio Show. Our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Come woo it up with Spaced Out Radio today. Bye. Cold drinks, great food, and the best music in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is the place to be, open until 2 a.m. nightly. Everything on the menu starts at just $6.95. Who serves food that cheap anymore? At the Moose, you'll never know who you'll run into. Rock stars, actors, athletes, it's the place everyone wants to be. So join us at the Moose Vancouver, the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. If you like it hot, real hot, then heat up your meals with Bumblefoot Hot Sauce. Get your Bumblefoot Hot Sauce today. The sauce, Bumblelicious, and the 4 million Scoville unit, Bumble, we're going in hot, real hot, coming out even hotter. Keep the milk nearby. And tantalize your taste buds tonight. Bumblefoot Hot Sauce, available now at kajans.com. We all know on Spaced Out Radio we love a good beard and mustache, so why not take care of your facial hair with Mighty Moose Beard Oil? Made in Canada, we're taking care of beards and stashes around the world. We use 100% natural ingredients with our oils and balms to make your whiskers feel silky smooth. Use promo code SOR2019 at MightyMooseBeard.com today. Hey everybody, the SOR Space Travelers is open. For just five bucks a month, you can hang out with Dave and our crew privately in our members-only section. With your signing, you'll receive newsletters on what's going on with Spaced Out Radio. You'll have direct contact with the host during the show in our chat, live streaming videos, and a great forum for your posts and more. Become a space traveler now at spacedoutradio.com. Need that weekend's 
supernatural fix? Look no further than Spaced Out Saturday right here at spacedoutradio.com. I'm Stacy Edwards. And I'm John Edwards. Each Saturday night, Stacy and I are going to bring you the best in paranormal, cryptids, UFOs, you name it, and we're going there. It's all about the experience and to share the knowledge with all of you. So tune us in every Saturday night on Spaced Out Saturdays starting at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com. You wanted new SOR gear, and now you can have it. The SOR Vault is fully stocked with t-shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and everything in between with great logos for you to choose from. So head on over to spacedoutradio.com, click on the SOR Vault, and go shopping. Pricing is quite affordable, and you can look good representing your favorite show. So go to our website and pick up your new SOR wear at the SOR Vault today. We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. I want to remind you that if you missed most of this show or others, you can check out our free archives at youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot. And don't forget to read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, which is updated daily. And you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio for the show, hashtag Spaced Out Radio, and my personal handle at Dave Scott SOR. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we'll get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes the anniversaries. You know what? I I got a couple of things before I get into the news, a couple of things I want to mention, and I want to give a shout out to a couple of important people in my life who are no longer with us. All right. Today would have been my nephew Bryce's 31st birthday. He died on July 17th, 2018. He was in rehab for a fentanyl addiction. And unfortunately, his rehab didn't go as planned. And he went back. And it was just one hit. Just one hit. Now, if you looked at my nephew, he was one of these dudes. He was about 5'11", probably 215, 220 pounds of solid muscle. You know, he didn't look like a junkie. He didn't look like someone who was, you know, a bum on the streets, you know, getting all all uh, infected with pockmarks and scabs and everything like that. He had an addiction. He loved life. He loved his family, but he had a demon. And that demon was called fentanyl. And, you know, I've, I've kind of gone through this transition because... I I used to cry a lot over this because I was 15 years old. My sister, his mother, is 10 years older than me. And I was 15 years old when I became an uncle. And, you know, I grew up with him. And the fact that he's not here is I'm, I'm through that sadness mode. I'm in the anger mode now. And I think we all kind of take these different steps. And I find myself very, very angry angry with society, the way we treat people, the way we treat addicts, the way we treat those who want help. Look, people get addicted to things all the time, whether it's video games, whether it's cigarettes, whether it's alcohol, fentanyl, heroin, pot, you name it. People, we are an addictive society. And sometimes those people need help. So if you are an addict, if you are an alcoholic, if you are somebody out there who is just struggling, remember, there is a support system out there for you, whether you're in Canada, whether you're in the United States, or wherever you are listening to this in the world. We love you. You are loved. 
and probably the biggest message that I could give everybody on this, okay, if you're struggling with any type of substance abuse or any type of addiction, all right, you have value, all right? Never forget that you have value. My nephew forgot that he had value. I know other people who have forgotten that they have value. The fact that you are a survivor from the time you entered the egg until now shows that you have value. Sure, life may not have been fair, whether it's the choices of your own or choices that others have made around you that have affected you. All right. But never forget that you have value. And that's the one message I tried to teach my nephew. And we all failed as a family. You know, as I said in his eulogy, you know, fentanyl may have won the battle, but they didn't win the war. They didn't win the war. So please, if you are in recovery, if you have recovered, or you are somewhere in between or not knowing what to do, remember, around here at Spaced Out Radio, you have value. You have value. And there are plenty of people within our Spaced Out Radio community who would love to donate their time to talk with you if you need somebody to talk to. Okay? If you just need a voice, there's always somebody there. That's the beautiful part of what we do. It's a beautiful part about our community, and that's how we bring things together. So rest in peace, my little Stu. I love you. I'll always remember you. And we move on. Next, it's also the two-year anniversary of the passing of the legend Art Bell. The hard part for what I do and many other show hosts do is trying to do our own thing without being compared. It is the worst when the best came first. It really is. Because let's face it, we all know there will never be another Art Bell. We all know that we're all playing second fiddle. We all know that he captivated us for 20 plus years on the radio. And we have to be able to move on, but we're allowed to remember the memories, the beautiful part of what we have now with YouTube, with podcasting and everything, is that we are able to, to sit there and we are able to listen to that legendary voice to that legendary way he delivered his words, his questioning, the people he talked to, with whether it was open lines or whether the way he inv- uh, interviewed guests. And you know what? We love him. We all respect him for the job that he did. And I can tell you this. I don't know if I would be doing this if it wasn't for him. Because I remember driving home from the radio station Late at night, I had an hour's drive to get home, and he was good company. And, you know, but there's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of good broadcasting out there right now, probably the best and the most that there's ever been. But just remember that there are many of us out there who are not trying to be the next Art Bell. We are trying to be the first one of us. So whether it's this show, whether it's other shows within this community, give them an opportunity. Don't judge them against the best because nobody will ever compete with that. Okay? Now, if they're using the name in vain or trying to make a living off of, oh, Art Bell this, Art Bell that, something we have never done around here, then I would question it because that's not honest broadcasting. But for those of us who love what we do because we got to do it, because we had that personal Art Bell experience, we are all better off for it. So rest in peace, Art Bell. I hope you're listening in. I hope you're having a great time up wherever you are. And most of all, I hope that you got the answers that you were looking for. And one day, maybe you'll come back and share them with us. Let's get to the news. A 93-year-old Pennsylvania woman 
whose plea to neighbors for more beer has gone viral on social media, and literally her request has been fulfilled by Coors Light. Olive Veronzi, who lives in Seminole, went viral after a Facebook photo was shared showing her standing with a can of Coors Light and holding a sign in her window reading, I need more beer. Veronese said several people have since reached out offering her beer. She goes, it's nice, something for a young lady. Coors Light said in a Twitter post that Veronese would soon be receiving some beer directly from the company. All have asked, and beer is on its way, Coors has stated, posting that beautiful picture with her giant smile. Good for Coors. Good for Coors for stepping up with that. Here's something really cool, too, in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Some children's birthdays are being celebrated this month and next with all the bells and whistles that a fire truck can provide. Shy of a ride anyhow, Aberdeen Fire and Rescue, Watertown Fire and Rescue, and the Brookings Fire Department want to help recognize kids' birthdays during the coronavirus outbreak. So, the effort started on April 2nd. The fire department came, and they brought me a bag with two glow sticks and pencils and Rice Krispie treats and a plastic fire helmet, said youngster Tate Odlin. They did that because it's my birthday, and my mom called them. That's awesome. Tate turned 11 that day, the day the truck made the stop by his house. He was all smiles as the spring snow fell and the family gathered outside to wave and thank the crew. The fire department rolled up several residences that day with sirens blaring at each stop. Firefighters dropped off a helmet filled with a care pack item and treats. The gifts were being left in the uh, left it in the boulevard to respect social distancing guidelines when the Aberdeen Fire Station put a post on Facebook offering the celebrations is fielded calls from excited parents wanting their to create a special birthday surprise for their children during a time when schools are closed and isolation efforts mean the usual birthday party options are restricted as of late afternoon the Aberdeen crew had confirmed more than 80 requests with more filtering in said chief Randy Meister good for them way to put a smile on children's faces uh oh hey when this is all over stay out of new york all right, stay out because the rats are mad. Yes, with restaurants, grocery stores, people throwing garbage on the ground or in containers, okay, it has cut off the food source for many rodents. On deserted streets across North America and around the world, rats are now in dire survival mode, experts say. If you take rats that have been established in an area or somebody's property and they're doing well, the reason they're doing well is because they're eating well. Bob Corrigan, an urban rodentologist, has said, ever since Corona broke out, not a single thing has changed with them because someone's doing their trash exactly the same in their yard as they've always done it poorly. But many other rats are not faring so well, says Corrigan, who works as a consultant with several city health departments and businesses, such as airports and shopping malls. A restaurant all of a sudden closes now, which has happened by the thousands, not just in New York City, but across the continent, around the world. And for those rats that were living by the restaurant someplace nearby, and perhaps for decades having generations of rats that depended on that restaurant food, well, life is no longer working for them, and they only have a couple of choices, and the choices are grim. They include cannibalism, rat battles, and infanticide. It's just like we've seen in the history of mankind where people try to take over the lands and they come with the militaries and armies and fight to the death, literally, for who's going to conquer that land. And that is what is happening right now with rats, he says. A new army of rats coming in, and whichever army has the strongest rats is going to conquer that area. Rats whose food sources have vanished will not just move into other colonies and cause fights over grub. They'll also eat one another, the dirty scoundrels. They're mammals just like you and I, and so when you're really, really hungry, you're not going to act the same. You're going to act very bad, usually, he says. So the rats are fighting with one another. Now the adults are killing the young in the nest and cannibalizing the pups. Residents of dense urban areas in some rural parts of the country have coexisted with these vermin, but the sightings in some cities have increased in recent weeks because of the pandemic. 
in New Orleans, where Louisiana's governor imposed a stay-at-home order that shuttered many restaurants, particularly those in the popular tourist area like the French Quarter, videos posted have shown in March swarms of rats taking to the streets to find food, and officials so- said social distancing is to blame. What we have seen in these practices are driving our rodents crazy, Mayor Latoya Cantrell said at a news conference. And what do rodents do? They will find food. They will find water. That puts our streets homeless in dire, dire strait. And that's why she is focused on them right now. Oh, yes, this is a big pandemic. And finally, finally, all right. A British police department posted a reminder on Twitter not to call the emergency number to report a neighbor for snoring. The Essex police communications officer tweeted that a call came in this past Sunday to the department's 999 emergency number reporting that the caller could hear someone snoring loudly. An unusual 999 call came at this time of the day. Caller reporting they can hear someone snoring. Advice was given to them, and the snoring is never a reason to call 999, no matter how annoying it is, the officer tweeted. The tweet used the hashtag, hashtag emergencies only, reminding the public that 999 is only in Europe for reporting emergency situations. Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as followed. What have you learned from your ET, cryptid, or paranormal experiences? Going to start off with Goddess Michelle. I have learned to expect everything and dismiss nothing. That should be, I have learned to expect everything and to dismiss nothing. We got it. We figured it out, Michelle. We're good that way. All right. Marty, who provided a fantastic clown on Twitter for hashtag Spaced Out Radio, as he does for every portion of this show. He goes, I've learned that although I have a keen interest in ETs, cryptids, and the paranormal, I have yet to experience any phenomena personally. That has led me to somewhat being a skeptic. Cynthia, it's taught me that anything is possible to exist. I just don't know what it is. Anthony, to always stay alert and keep an open mind. Can't see what you aren't open to. Nathan, they speak more on the verbal levels. They communicate on multiple levels, verbal, mental, emotional, and visually. Ronnie, that these phenomena are all connected, that my consciousness is allowing more doors to open, that we are changing, evolving psychically. Let it happen. Open up to it. Don't fight it or block it. That's only stunts your consciousness. A51S on Twitter, they pretty chill beings. Jace, that there is a lot of truths and untruths out there. It's sad. Ghost Cat Dave, Investigate with respect and caution. They have feelings too. James, it's not all dimensional and we're not a part of it. Some intuitives and psychics are, but most are not. If you haven't experienced anything, you're not trying. Patty, be afraid. Be very afraid. Okay, I guess we're supposed to be afraid according to Patty. Let's move on here. Cat. That our world is more than what we see. David, I feel I learned that death on this planet is not the end. Natasha, that everything cannot be explained away. Russell, humans are barely entry-level intelligence. Okay. Nikki, regarding specific ETs, your human body is your freaking laboratory or their freaking laboratory. You're their lab rat. Regarding cryptids, specifically Sasquatch, they're choosing certain humans and trying to help enlighten them so they can become mouthpieces of coming information. Regarding paranormal, bring in your dancing shoes and hold on tight. It's going to be one hell of a bumpy ride. Richard, that te- their technology is just as fallible as ours. 
Scott, our, our reality is being manipulated. Park, don't relate it to anyone. Oh, yeah, that's true. There's some people out there who really can handle it. Renee, Renee in Denmark, how you doing? Renee says, there is more to this universe than we can see. Very true, my friend. John, that far too many people have closed minds. Michelle, UFO investigator, former guest here. Michelle Deschamps. I learned that the world and the universe that surrounds us is even more mysterious than we could possibly imagine. Kevin, Kevin Day from the Nimitz incident. He's got fantastic hair, high and tight. He goes, I learned how to Google. <laughs> of course you did. Of course you did. How's the radar looking these days? Any UFOs on there? Any Tic Tacs? I forgot to ask Kevin when I met him in San Francisco if he buys Tic Tacs now as just a reminder. James, it's a giant mirror that shows your true content of the soul curator. Nate, have experienced all three. There are things in this world we just don't understand. I want to know. That is what fuels the search for the truth in me. And Karen says that we are very insignificant in the grand scheme of things, that this life on Earth isn't it. There's definitely something after this. Final word goes to T. Allen Greenfield, the author of The Secret Cipher of the UFO Knots. He says, sometimes they evoke the sense of wonder, sometimes they bite. Thank you to everybody participating in the thought of the day. We will do it all again tomorrow. Big thanks to Captain Shirk for the news and to Chris Bledsoe for coming on in and telling his story about ET contact. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, in your cars, at work, wherever you may be. Thank you to everybody participating in our chat rooms on Spreaker, YouTube, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the Space Travelers Club at our website, and to all the snarkers and snarkettes hanging out on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. You are beautiful tonight. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for sharing your night with us, because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night, Mr. Bumblefoot. We need a favor. We need you to take us home. Have a great night, everybody. We'll do it all again tomorrow. Come join us, will you? Good night.